much. And um, I would like to say a big uh, thank you for the messages um, last year when I couldn't make um, the meeting due to some family emergencies. I would like to say a big thank you to everyone. And um, I really so much appreciate that. Okay, so um, happy new year once again. And um, we are kicking off this year by um, going to the next chapter, which is a um, chapter on um, data import. And um, this section was um, introduced by Daniel. I think Daniel started this section, if I'm not mistaken, last year. And um, yes, I'll be doing um, data import and I think um, tidy, then I think some other members or some other colleagues will be doing the remaining um, chapters in this section on that round book. Okay, so today we'll um, be starting with the data import and um, yeah, I'll be using the, um, the markdown book from the R studio. Unfortunately, um, the R for data science book doesn't have um, the content for in the previous, in the previous um, chapters that uh, it, it took. Okay, so um, today, like I said, we'll be looking at um, data import and um, the old gist here will be um, to look at how to bring in data of different uh, extensions or different types into the R you know, environment and then see how to tidy and then visualize as um, the case may be. Okay, so um, we are still using um, the tidyverse uh, package and um, we'll be working with um, the read R today and um, I would just delve into, into it. Okay, so um, the introduction here says, I'm working with data provided by our package is a great way to learn the tools of data science, but at some point, we might want to stop learning and then we want to be masters you know, on our own right. So in this chapter, we learn how to read plain text, regular file, rectangular files into R. And not only that, we would also would, um, only scratch the surface here, but like um, when I was trying to you know, uh, prepare for this class, I realized that um, this, chapter and the next chapter you know, forms like a bedrock of um, subsequent chapters and um, maybe subsequent you know, lessons we might be learning as regards um, data manipulation. So we might want to pay some close attention and then also maybe on our own to try to also read as I might not be able to cover it or I might not be able to talk about you know, everything. And then we'll fish you know, with a few pointers to packages that will be useful for other types of um, data. Now the learning objectives here are one, to read the data from the disk or from our drive or from the any where we have saved it using the read R, you know, read R family functions, that's a read underscore CSV, etc. I would see subsequently. Then we we'll compare and contrast you know, the read R or the read functions with other base R you know, equivalents. And then we'll see how to pass you know, character data into other data types. And then also it goes on like that and we we'll see how to diagnose, we we'll see how to you know, save, how to write data and how to you know, describe common conventions. You know. Those are just you know, the learning objectives. And then we use this to evaluate you know, our learning by the time you know, we come to the end of, you know, of this chapter. Now, there are prerequisites in this chapter. We learn how to load you know, files in R using the read R package, package. And the goal of the read R is to provide you know, a fast and friendly way to read rectangular data like it was um, uh, established earlier. And there are some other ways to which you can read data into R, but this read R you know, is fast and is also friendly. And it can read data you know, with extensions like CSV, CSV, and then FWF. We would see this subsequently. So let's kick start. You know, the first thing we would um, load our library which is um, the tidyverse. Most of the read R functions, some of us are familiar with some of this, while some of us are new to it. Most of the read R functions are you know, concerned with turning flat files into data frames. And um, I hope I'm still audible enough. The connection is shaking here. So um, yeah, here we have uh, the read CSV, which will read um, the, all right. 
the read CSV, which is going to read, which is going to read um, semicolon separator files. You no, know, that's in some countries like South Africa where they use you no know, comma instead of um, um, points or uh, etc. Then we have the read CSV that's a um, tab delimited files. Then we have the read the limp that's the limiter, and it doesn't stop there. We have the fixed width files. We have a um, read table, we have read log, you no, know, and you know the list keeps on going like that. Now, all these functions, you no, know, they have similar syntax. And um, all we need to know, all we need to know is to master one, and then we could uh, manipulate you know, using the others. So this chapter will focus on the read CSV, which is um, the comma delimited. And then we, we can easily apply you know, this knowledge to other you know, read R, read R functions. So here would um, see some of the um, here is what you know, a simple CSV file looks like. Some of us are familiar with it. And then we'd see how you know, the read function helps in you know, rearranging and sorting it carefully. So here we have read lines, and then we are reading the, 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 the file stored in the data, uh, the data folder you know, called students.csv. So we want to read, you know, read it as lines. And then we see you know, the separator. This is the separator here. So, and then we'll see what you know, this looks like. So, so this is the data. We have student ID, we have full name, favorite food, favorite food, meal plan, and then we have age. Then we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we have you no, know, this as a comma delimited. So um, this is what you know, the lines look like. And then this is what you know, we, want to, we want to read now. Here is telling us that we should note the, the separator, which is the comma that separates you know, the columns. And then um, we can now see the, um, the read CSV you know, showing the same, you know, the same file you know, here. So we see you know, this is uh, the console. This tells us you know, um, some details about you know, the file. And then here we have, um, the data from the CS students.csv as a table, we still have the same student ID, but here it's you no, know, it's a bit you no, know, it's it's a bit tidy. Yeah, let me use that. It's a bit tidy in quotes now. Here we have um, student ID, we have the full name, favorite food, then we have meal plan, and then we have age. Then what's this telling us? The first argument read read underscore CSV is the most important, and then it's the path to the file to read. So um, after the read CSV, we have the, you know, the function brackets and it's inside that function bracket to have the part where you know, we've saved you know, the CSV file that we are reading. And that's why we have, we have like the student, you know, is the name of the, we want to call the name of the file. And then the file actually itself is called students.csv. And this is how you know, the syntax is going to be presented if you want to do, if you want to do it on our own, if you have a .csv file, so we have it read .cs, read underscore csv rather, and then we put it in um, the inverted you no know, quotes, and then data forward slash the student .csv. and then yeah, so we have you no, know, we have um, the the data you no know, in in the specified formats that we want. Now, when you run a read underscore csv, it prints out a message. Yeah, that tells us, okay, so all what we can do here, now if you do students, I think now would have um, the data frame. Exactly. Okay, so now I think we'll do that subsequently. So now we have um, the, the, the students as a data frame or as a table, rather, let me use the correct, as a table now. So we have the student ID, the full name as a character. We have the favorite food as character. We have the meal plan as character, and then we have the age as character. So subsequently, we'll see how to improve on this, and then how to pro, um, present it, you know, in a more better manner. Now, when we run the read underscore CSV, it prints out a message that tells us how many rules we've been doing this, you know, subsequent, you know, subsequent, you know, previous chapters rather, and then columns that you know, the data has along with the, you know, the delimiter used, whether it is R, whether it is comma, sorry, or a full stop. And then the column specifications, and it also prints out some information 
about how to retrieve the full Coulomb specification as you know, as, and some other things too. So we can supply, you no. Know, however, we can also supply an inline CSV file. This is useful for experimenting with uh, read R and for cre cre uh, for creating reproducible examples to share to share with others. So something like this, we've done something like this in some um, in previous chapters. So here we have, I think when we're creating the table or something, here we have A, B, C, then we have um, the numbers, everything together. And let's see how this is going to look like. So these are the details. Um, the delimiter is a comma. And then we have you know, some other information about this. And then we have this, this is a table, a two by three table. And we have A, B, C arranged as a one, two, three, then four, five, six. So this is a three by two, two by three, two by three table. And um, in both cases, the read CSV uses the first line of the data for the columns, which is a very common convention. So it uses the first line of the data for the columns. There are two cases where one might you know, have to tweak you know, this behavior. And to do that, sometimes, you no, know, one, sometimes there are a few lines of metadata at the top of the file that we might want you know, people to see. So we can skip it. So we can use skip is equals to n to skip the first n lines, or, or we can comment it out with this hashtag, which is going to drop all the lines. So we can see this in this example here. If you look at this, I think if you look at this, okay. So for the first one, we have, um, sorry. Okay. Okay, sorry. Yes, okay. So for the first one, we have this first line of metadata, the second line of metadata, then we have X, Y, Z, one, two, three. But here we have this um, caveat, skip, you no, know, is equals to two, that means, you should skip the first two lines. If we remove this, let's see. If we remove this, control X. So we can see what this is gonna do. It's going to run. Okay, so that should give us, um, yeah, so this comes up. This is the first line you know, of, of the metadata. This is the second line of the metadata. So that's uh, what that, um, function does it's we are telling it to skip the first two lines or we can actually just comment it out you know using this hashtag and then we'd have um, xyz123 so that's just you know, to tell us if we need to you know do some other you know switching to to our data sets now the second way is um, the data might not have column names so we could set column column underscore names to false so this is going to tell the read underscore CSV not to treat the first rows as headings and instead label them you know, sequentially from X1 to XN. So this here, so this is what you know, this is saying. Um, we just have read underscore CSV. We have um, one, two, three, and then we have a separator and then four, five, six. But here we are saying column name you no know, is false because we don't have column name. So it's going to treat it, you know, it's going to run it X1, X2, X3 till XN. And then it's going to arrange it, you know, the normal way it should arrange, it should arrange it. So um, uh, backslash SN, N, backslash N is a convenient shortcut for adding a new line. We'll learn more about this and other types of string escape, you know, in, in, in this chapter. And, no subsequent ones. Alternatively, we can pass column names, you know, a character vector, which will be used as as the column as the column name. So this is just another way. You know, here we have the read underscore CSV, the function, the read R base function, and then we have one, two, three. Now we know what this does. Now this is you know, a convenient way of adding a new line, and then we are telling you know, instead of saying column name is false, we are saying, okay, we should concatenate you know, this as you know, the column name as X, Y, Z. So if you run this now, sorry. If you run this now, then we have X, Y, Z as our new 
column names as against you know, what we have um, the um, the previous uh, um, uh, workings. Okay, so uh, before I go on, any question so far? Reaction? Okay, I hope I'm not too fast. Okay, so um, another option that commonly needs switching is um, the NA, which is um, not applicable. This specifies the values or values that are used to represent you know, when we have a missing values you know, in our file. So um, here now we have ABC, the new line is just one and two, and then we have a dot. So we are saying the dot is what is NA. So if we read this now, we should have an NA. So we have an NA as you no know, as as um, as the dot. So this is um, just um, some of the things we can use to improve um, our data sets and then you know, to to avoid um, error when maybe we are performing some other you no know, analysis subsequently. Okay. So this is all we need to read approximately 75% of CSV files that we encounter you no know, in practice you no know, generally. So um, we can adapt what we've learned to read tab separated files with TSV or fixed width files with FWF. You no. Know? Also to read more challenging files, we need to learn about how read R passes each column, turning them into R vectors. And we'll do some of these um, subsequently. Now, the first steps, let's take another look at the student data that um, we worked on previously. In the favorite food column, there are a bunch of food items and then the character string NA, which should have been, you know, uh, and uh, a real NA that R will you know, we recognize not as a, not available as it is N slash A. It should just be NA. So um, this is something we need to address. And then we know how to do this now. We just, all we need to pass, you know, the NA, you know, argument and then tell what the NA is in that, you know, in that file. So if you read the file, the student file now, okay. So, okay, well, maybe what I should do is, um, let me take us back to, um, okay, how the file was initially, let me call it students, let's go to read, let's go this read. Okay, perhaps this should run. Okay, all right. So, uh oh, it's not showing. It's showing the same thing. Okay, yes. Okay, so under favorite food, we see this NA here as um, N, comma A, because we've not passed these arguments to tell you no know, the read R function what NA is, because in this way, you no know, R is not seeing it as um uh, as a missing as a, it's not seen as a missing um value, it's seen it as as another character, as another food. It's just seen as another favorite food. So here. Now we've corrected that with this you no know, argument, and then we have NA as you no know, as um, favorite food for this um, particular student ID number three. Okay, so um, that's that about that. Now, once we have our data in, now the first step is usually transforming it in some way to make it easier to work with, you know, for some other analysis we want to do. For example, the column names in the student file we read in are formatted in non-standard ways. You know, the column name, in, yeah, this is um, this is the name, yeah, okay. Non-standard ways. You might consider renaming them one by one with um, a deep deep layer rename, or you might use the janitor clean names function and turn them into a snake case at all no, all at once. We'd we'll see some of this. Now this function takes in a data frame and returns the data from variable names converted to snake case. We'd see this, you no, know, yeah, subsequent. However, the janitor 
package before we can use it. It doesn't come with the tidy verse. We have to install it. So I think I have installed it. So if we do um, library, janitor, student, and pipe clean names, then, yeah. So we have um, full name, student ID. I think they are all in um, lower case now. Yes. So full name is, is in lower case, student ID is in lower case, uh, um, meal plan, lower case, age, lower case. So um, all what was done here is to use the library janitor. We have to download that you know, as a fresh package and then uh, pass the students, you no, know, um, yeah, the students uh, file into you know, the clean names. And then it's going to you know, do what it should do. It's going to convert you know, the um, column names into you no know, low, low, lower case as, as we've seen here, as the case is. Okay, so another common task after reading the data is to consider the variable names. For example, meal type, what's wrong with meal type, okay? Is a categorical variable with a known set of possible values, okay? Because on that meal type, you only have lunch only breakfast and lunch okay so you only have two types you no know, of of you only have two categories okay in r factors can be used to mark to work with categorical variables we can convert this you no know, to a factor using the as factor function okay so um here what was done is different from it looks is different a little bit from what you know, i'm familiar with but it's still the same thing so what, all what was done here is um, to create a, you know, to create a function student, and then we have the student that is passed into the clean names, and then is passed into the mutates. We've worked on mutates, you know, in um, previous um, classes, and then we have the meal plan, and then we have factor. That means to convert this meal meal plan into factor and then to return you no know, to return it into students and then you know, we see what you no know, what happens so here now we have it as so the only thing they are changing now is to change like the label of this meal plan from a character into um a factor now what this does um for analysis is that um is just it has labeled this meal plan as one and two um, in in um, in um, category in in the categorical sense. Now that means if you want to do um, some statistics, now you can actually do like um, some mean median mood and some other statistics with this meal plan now because it's already seen it as a factor now. And then you know you can carry out some standard statistical analysis there are some other ways through which one can do this one can do um the students and then the dollar sign meal plan is equal to as dot factor something like this but i'm not i didn't i didn't check if it's going to uh, if it's going to work but that's um how i've been how i used to do it something like this um as dot factor then students, let's go. Yeah, so something like this should um, should also work. I, I I didn't check this. Okay, then um, okay. Let me call it um, SS. Okay, okay, yes. Okay, okay. So what I can do is to check it's like this. Control X. I'm not sure. Okay, okay. All right, let's see, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, yeah, so something like this is also going to work. It's going to change it to, into factor, but I think it's, um, it's, it's more or less, you know, the same thing as, you know, what, what we have here. It's still the same factor. It's just to convert, you know, this meal plan to factor. So as many um, factor levels that we want to have in our data frame, we can use um, this um, function, factor function to to convert, you no, know, to convert it. Okay, so 
like I've said, all what that was changed is to change from character to what to a factor. Before you move on to analyzing this data, you probably will probably want to fix the age also column as well. Currently, it's a character and um, it's a character variable, and it's a character because of this um, student ID five. Yeah, we have um, instead of it as a zero man numeral now as a figure instead of it as a digit. Okay, let me use the one that instead of it as a digit. Now we have it as a, as in words. So we might want to change this, you know, uh, so that it's going to be amenable to other you know, statistical um, analysis. Okay, um, we will discuss how to fix this in subsequent, you know, in subsequent chapters or in this chapter, I think before the end of the chapter. If we've used R before, we might wonder why we are not using um, read.csv. Um, yes, I've also wondered that. There are a few good reasons to favor read R functions over the base you know, equivalent. Now, um, the first one is that um, read underscore CSV is typically much faster. It said approximately 10 times faster than the base equivalent. And then also they produce tables. They don't convert character to vectors, you no, know, use row names, or they don't munch the column names. So, and also they are reproducible. Base R functions, uh, we are told that it inherits the behavior from your operating system into the environment variable. And this is actually very true. And so if you import code that works on your computer, and so import code that works on your computer might not work on someone else's computer. Okay, so we now have um, some exercises. I, I think I've um, attempted some of them. Um, what function are we going to use to read a file where the fields are separated with, um, is it a forward slash now, a forward slash? So, the solution is to use um, a read underscore the limb, then the part, the file, that's the part where the file is stored, and they would specify that this is um, the delimiter. You know, for the comma, or if it's a CSV, read underscore CSV, the separator will put it as a comma, depending on whatever the, the separator is. But here now, we are, we are using read underscore the limb, and then um, we are using, um, the the, the uh, this stroke as uh, as the as the delimiter. Okay, so we can read more on this, and then um, if you use um, if we can read more on this um, subsequently. Okay, so apart from file skip and comment, what other arguments do read underscore csv and read underscore csv have in common? So um, what what do they have in common? We can check some of this. Um, if we do, um, we can check some of these. Perhaps if you come here, read underscore CSV. Um, okay. So here we have so the read underscore CSV and read underscore um, TSV are special cases of more general this, they are useful for reading the most common types of flat file data, comma separated and tab separated. And then this okay, is common in European countries. So we can see some of the things they have in common. And um, these are some of the things. So this read underscore CSV, CSV, and then we are, okay, so this T, TSV. So they both, they still both use things like column underscore names, column underscore types. Yes, we have column underscore names, column underscore types, ID. So we can use this to check you know, some of um, their similarities. And then we see what um, we could pass into them. What other things we could pass into them when we need to use, you know, when we need to use some of these, um, some of these um, functions in our day-to-day -day activity. Okay, so what are the most important arguments to read fixed width? So um, the most important argument to read, to read um, to use this read underscore FWF, which reads fixed width format is co um, column positions, which tells the function where data columns begins 
and where it also ends. I, I've, I've actually not used this function before. Perhaps if anybody you know um, has more experience in using um, read underscore FWF, perhaps you might shed light on no to um, him. The name suggests, but I've, I've actually not um, um, used. Perhaps if anybody you know has seen where it's being used, can shed more light. But it's used colon positions, which is uh, okay. Okay, uh, this is actually my first time of coming across you know, this particular read underscore FWF. So, okay. Sometimes strings in a CSV file contains commas. We already know that. To prevent them from causing problems, they need to be surrounded by a quoting character like this or this. By default, read underscore CSV assumes that the quoting character will be this. What argument to read underscore CSV do you need? Okay, found the show that. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, okay, can I always check that? Okay, so what, argu what argument to read do you need to specify to read the following text? into a data frame okay so here all right okay so here we have um x y and then this is saying that um you should start a new column a but this a b and then we have this so um how do we solve this? I think we should throw this out now. I actually have the solution in the, there is actually a solution book to, um, um, what's it called? R for data, R for data science. Um, Mr. Daniel mentioned it, but I also came across it, I think the first time I took the class. So there's actually a solution book where all this, um, the solutions are actually uh, present um but unfortunately i don't think um are for data science i don't think i saved it okay so i'm coming i just want to quickly check okay so that um yes okay so i think i've i've opened it so i will share my screen so we use it to, um, okay. I think I've my okay. Can you see the solution page now? Uh, not on your screen, at least. Okay, okay, okay. So I have to stop sharing and then reshare. Okay. Okay. Alpha data science. All right. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, is it visible now? Yes, yes, it is. Okay. So, um, okay, if I'm not mistaken, this should be uh, the solution. Yes, this should be the solution book. So we've done this. Um, yes, we've done this. Okay, so this is it. Um, this is the exercise. So what do we need? to solve this yeah so we specify yeah, for read underscore delim we will need to specify a delimiter in this case a comma yes because yeah we have it as a comma and a quote argument so if this is what if, if we call it, we can call it any any letter or anything so read delim the file is x the delimiter is a comma and then the quotes you no know, here we have the quotes here no we have the quotes here this is the quote argument so we have um, a, a, a one by two table we have one and then we have a okay oh sorry we have a one by two table we have x y and then we have another uh, yeah we have another separator here which is one a b I think it's because of this. Uh, okay, I think the way this is now, this is not seeing it as an X, Y, A, B. This is seeing this as another 
um, there's another entity entirely. So uh, I, I think, yes. So that is what, here we have this as X, Y. It's going to read this as a column. And then here we have one, because this is saying another row, the backslash N is saying another row. So we have one, and then we have um, one here, and then we have A, B. So uh, it doesn't really make sense, but it's, um, it's just to show um, how we can, um, um, how we know what um, the quote argument does, and then how we specify um, a delimiter. Now, um, however, this question is out of date. The read underscore CSV now supports a quote argument. So the following code works, read underscore CSV, then X is the file, and then we can just use the quotes, and then we have the same, the same output. Now for the next um, um, question, um, I would want us to go over it. Now identify what is wrong with each of the following inline CSV files. What happens when we run this code? So let's see the first one. We have, oh, sorry, I need to share my screen. Yeah. Okay, so question five says, um, identify what happens, identify what is wrong with each of the following inline CSV files. What happens when you run this code? Okay, because I don't want to feel like I'm the only one talking, so I'll permit, um, Mr. Daniel, permit me to call names so that at least you can have it more interactive. So um, maybe I'll go with Mr. Daniel, help us with this first one. Read underscore CSV, we have A, B, we have a new line, um, one, two, three, we have another line, four, five, six. But if we run this, there's likely going to be an error. There's likely going to be an error. Okay, let me run it. Okay. But there is no, okay, one or more passing issues. So there's an error of warning. Yes, it's going to show, but it's not showing the right way. So something is wrong. This should not be like this. So something is wrong somewhere. So what um, do you think is wrong? I think the, the third row itself is not being specified. I think, I think the five, six is supposed to show as a row. Exactly. Uh, first code. Um, exactly. So trying to diagnose what causes the problem, I guess that's the problem now. But, okay. I, but I mean, that's immediately what I can see. Five, six oh. is not showing. Sure. Okay. I can see that he has two columns. Um, they're supposed okay. to be three rows. I three think. columns. Okay. So, and if there's yeah. going to be three, very, that means this also should be A, B, C, something like that. Exactly. Yes. So it's always going to be three, three columns. Yeah. 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 So, okay. Right. Okay. Okay, so we we'll note that. Um, let's go to the next one. Oh, okay, let's go to the next one. Um, I'll just call as I see names here. Um, Freya can help us with this. We have this ABC is justified, but we have the first line should be one is saying one two, and then the second line is saying one two three four. So what could you think? What are the few things that you can point out that is wrong here? Um. It's not enough on the okay. first row and too much on the <laughs> on the final row. All right. Okay. Okay. So okay. Yes. So because we have one, two, three, four here, then maybe you have something like A, B, C, D. And if you have A, B, C here, and we have one and two here, that means you have one, two, three. So uh, yeah. So something like that. We we'll still check the the, um, the final solution. But yes, we are on the right track. So um, this we have A, B. Um, yeah, we have a line. And then we have another line and we have one. So what is wrong here, Shannon? Can you point out? It looks like um, it's kind of weird that the la that last one is in its own. There's okay. just kind of a floating double quote in the middle there. Okay. So I'm not really sure what that's going to do, but that doesn't look right. Okay. Okay. I think it shows um, we have, we've, um, yeah, it shows we've um, followed. Okay, so let's check um, from the solution. I th we are all on track. Okay, so what is wrong with, okay. The first one, 
we have row column one, two, column, okay, we have row column expected, column three, okay, columns literal file data, okay, it's able to by two, one and two. So we have, um, okay, uh, let's see, okay. Only two columns are specified as either A and B, but the columns have three, but the rows have three columns. Yes, which is what yeah, we, we also, um, Daniel said. So the last column is dropped. So we should have something like this, A, B, C, and then one, two, okay. Yes, so we should have, yeah, we should have A, B, C, which would uh, make this um, valid, which, which would make this valid. Okay, let's see. Okay, we'll check that so that we won't go back and forth. Now, the next one by Freya, um, it says the number of columns in the data do not match the number, the number of, yeah, the number of columns in the data do not match the number of columns in the header three, yes, which is true. In row one, there are only two columns, so column C is also set to missing, yes, which we also identified. So in row two, there's an extra value, which is four, and the value is dropped, we don't have a D. So, um, yeah, so that's why we have this error. Now, this one, we have a passing error failure. It is not clear, yeah, I think we all, we all agree to this. It is not clear what the intent was here. The opening quote one is dropped because it is not closed. And then A is treated as an integer. So we actually don't even know what's, no, what's, what's, um, what's, what this is um, trying to pass trying to pass across okay so um the rest um okay sorry the rest should follow suit um most likely the same thing there is na but we really don't have what is na we really don't know what is na and is really not specified so we need to pass you know an argument to tell us what is na and then here we have um, a semicolon. We've not been using semicolon. Even if you want to use semicolon as a separator, then we need to pass an argument to say, okay, our separator is going to be a semicolon. Okay, so um, let's quickly see if we can rush through the rest. Okay, so reading through, reading data for multiple files. Now, sometimes our data is split across multiple files. Uh, I think some of us using, um, those of us into Excel, if you have sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, sheet four, actually before this, before reading this, what I do is that I have to merge all my files into one one sheet. I know they I know they do this in Python, but um, I've actually not um, thought about it in R, or I've not had time to really see how you know, they treat it in R. So sometimes we might have um, different sheets: sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, sheet four, or yeah for different years of different sales of or whatever you know the output is and then with read csv or with read underscore csv we can only read data in at once and then what we can do is um we can now stack them in a single in a single data frame for example here it's called sales files so we are asking it to concatenate data you know the same data the same um file in data named 01 sales the same data the same file in data named 02 sales the same data the same file in data named 03 sales so we are asking it you know, to sort of um, i think i use maybe sort of concatenate it and then we will now pass the read underscore csv and then say um, sales underscore files and then have a, a common id and then we have a common ID called file, provided this um, ID is also um, common to, this, um, to these files. So if we do this, yes, if we do this now, we have the common ID, and then we have um, um, the, the different sheets. Yes, the different sheets now you know, stacked on, on top of each other as a single table. No, yes, as, so, um, However, this could become very monotonous. Um, let's say we have um, over a thousand or files running to hundreds of thousands. Uh, we, we might not even know what we've saved each of them as. So what do we do? Now, before we go to what do we do, um, with an additional ID parameter, we have added a new column called file to the resulting data frame that identifies, that identifies the file 
the data come from okay so the file the id doesn't even have to be common to yes it doesn't have to be common to the um to the file but it's going to create you no know, um a, a new a new column called file yes okay so this is especially helpful in circumstances when files that we are reading do not have an identifying column yes this so this can help us trace the observations back to the original sources okay like I said now, if you have many files that you want to read in, it could get very cumbersome. And then could um, use what we call a um, list. That's a um, directory, um, yeah, directory underscore list function from the FS package to find the files and then use a matching pattern then to, to, to aggregate it together. So we use a, they use a glob module. The glob module finds the path names um, with a specified um, using a specified pattern, so um, the library fs, and then this, the same sales files, and then we ask we are asking um, we, so we are passing this function directory underscore list directory underscore list, and then the same data, and then we use this globe, and then we have we, we are going to pass the argument like this, you no. Know, um this uh, asterisk yeah this asterisk sales.csv so this what this is saying is that um everything with sales.csv you should pick it you no know, in this data file and then it's going to list it so if we run this so we are going to have a list so we have data 01 data 02 so if it runs into hundreds of files then it keeps um it will give us the list and then we can now copy and then pass these arguments and we have you know, what um, what we need. Yes. Oh, no. I, I don't think we need to copy. I think we can just read it straight. Let me be sure. I think we can just read it. Read. So I think it should read it. Yes. Okay. This is even very good. So it's going to read it, but we don't have, um, I didn't give it any ID. So it's not going to give us an ID. So we can specify ID is equal to Hmm. Training is it going to be in quote? I think so. Yes. Okay. So it's going to be in quotes like this. Training. This. All right. So so we have a new. So we have a new column, and then we can use it to tra to trace. You no. Know, what um, the files you know, looks like. So we don't need to copy um, anything. We just use the directory underscore list. It's going to pick everything with sales, everything having um, um, sales.csv. And then we can read you know, the entire you know, um, data frame at, as, at once as, as, a, as a table. So the, the, the other part is um, how to save, you know, write into a file. You know, read R also comes with two useful functions for writing data back to disk. That's um, write underscore CSV and then write underscore TSV depending on what you know, we are working, the extension we are working with. You now both functions increase the chances of the output file being read back incorrectly you know, by always encoding strings and saving dates and date times you know, in these formats and, and they are easily passed elsewhere. So, um, if you want to export a CSV file to Excel, then we can use write Excel CSV. You no, know, this write a special character. You know, it writes it you know, as an Excel file, and then I think you should open as um, .xls. So the most important arguments are you no know, the X, which is the data frame to save, the file, which is the location to save it. You, then we can also specify if you have missing values, which we know as NA. And then if you want to append you know, to an existing, ex existing file, okay? So if, if, uh, if, if I write this now, it's going to save into my um, R for data science um, 
R for data science um, file, and then we'd have it here. I think if, if I come here now, if I scroll down, we should have it, okay. <laughs> okay. Should be here. Saved as what, students? Yeah, so this is it here, yeah? students.csv. So if, if I open it now, we'll see, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll see what, um, what has been saved. And then um, note, we should also note that um, the information is lost. No, we should also note the type of information that is lost when we save to CSV. We can compare this, we save and we read it. Okay, let's see. Um, um, what is lost when we save and when we read? Um, I don't know whether I have, I have to come out, okay. I think we just have to check what is saved and what is lost, um, yeah. We check it here, what is saved and what is lost. Um, when we save as, dot, um, as um, dot .csv, we can just practice that um, on our own. Now, this makes CSV a little bit unreliable for catching interim results. So we might need to recreate the column specification every time we load it. That means we are losing the column when we save as CSV. Now, write underscore RDS and read underscore RDS are uniform wrappers around the base functions. And they store in R. You know, if you want to, you know, if you want to save it as um, R customary binary format called RDS, so we can use um, write underscore RDS, or and then we can read it back, and then we we'll see how um, it is done. However, if we do this, we can only read it in R because yes, because of the extension dot RDS. So we write it, it saves, and then we can read it, and then we will not lose um, any column as as it's as the case is with um, CSV. Now the feather package implements a fast binary file format that can be shared across programming languages. Feather tends to be faster than RDS and is also usable outside of R. You know, RDS supports list columns and then I think would um would um, learn this subsequently. So if I do file.remove CSV file.remove um, RDS is going to remove you know, the um, the student's um, record that I have here. It's already removed. It's going to remove it from um, from my folder. And I think this can be done, especially when we have um, when we are doing large analysis and then we've saved and we are done with it, or we use we've used it for subsequent um, analysis and we don't need it again. We can just remove it from our folder so that it doesn't um, takes up. It doesn't take up more, more, more space. Okay, so other type formats, we can read other type formats like um, Excel file, which uses read Excel for .xls and for .xlxx. Then we can read Google Sheets. We can read DBI, you no, know, that's um, SQ, um, my SQL, SQL Lite, that's for those into um, query languages. Um, SQL, and then it can also read Haven, like SPSS, Stata, and SAS. No, for data like JSON Lite and all that, and others, um, yeah, it can read all, all those ones to JSON and then XML. Uh, there's a tutorial here which we can check, and um, I think that's the end of um, this um, chapter. That's um, data import and. Um, I will quickly go through the um, the pretest, which is um, reading data from disk. I think we know that now using the read R function. We can use read dot underscore CSV, read underscore TSV, read underscore no, no. Um, okay, this okay, okay. Um, how do I share it? That's um, going to be an issue. I don't think I'm that vast. Okay. I can save it and then, um, um, okay, I can save it and then I can share it on Slack. 
I think that that's that's the only way I can think about it. Or any other yeah, suggestion. I think that's fine. I, I, I okay. think that's that's perfect actually. You could just put it okay. on the Alpha DS Slack channel. I think that's fine. Thanks. Okay. So um, we've been able to compare and contrast um, different R, read R, read R package or functions with the base R equivalent. We know how to pass you know, the, um, this uh, function, especially for, if you want to do directory list, if you want to use a lot of, um, a lot of, um, a lot of files, and then we can change um, character to factor, then, um, we know when complications arise, we can, we can, what to do, um, encodings. Yeah. I talked about that briefly and then describe the common conventions using dates or time data. Yes. Diagnose. I'm not sure about this, whether this was treated extensively We diagnose problems, you know, may arise when using this. Yes. Yes. We know how to do this. So if we use this, we can see the list of the files. And then we can read it, and then we can also use we can also trace where the problem is. Since if we create a new column, yes, if we create a new column, and then we know how to write data to disk using the right you know family functions, write um, underscore CSV, write underscore CSV, and then some other some other writes Excel write underscore Excel underscore CSV, etc. etc. So. Um, thank you very much for coming around today. Um, we are done with data imports and I hope we've been able to take one or two things from this um, chapter. Next week, we'll go to data tidy and then um, we'll take it up from there. Thank you very much. Over to you, Mr. Daniel. I mean, thanks very much. I, I think that kind of covers everything. We'll probably just resume the room next week. Thanks, guys. Thank you guys for, for joining me today. All the best. Thanks. Bye.